Hi everyone, it's Bobby. I am here to share with you a design team project for Country Craft Creations. And this is using the papers from the Craftology box. They are known for the holidays, the Thanksgiving edition. And they are by Photoplay. So I have made something completely different this time. This is a very flat piece with pockets and pullouts. It does not have spines like you have in the traditional album. Uh, it has the pull aparts and it is fairly plain on the back. And I will show you. It is secured with a ribbon. And I used a die that I have called the fancy uh, tag topper punch to make these little flaps. And that is my closure. So when you open each side, you have a photo mat on each one of the sides. This one is fastened down. This one is actually a pullout. In the front pocket, I used the little fence that came with the collection, and I added a little sprig of grass and a couple pumpkins. And I made these pumpkins with a little three-quarter inch punch. I just punched out three circles, inked them, and cut a little um, green sprig for the top out of a scrap. And I thought they turned out so cute sitting in front of that fence. So I used one of the cut aparts for this tag. And I have a larger pumpkin on the back. This little tag is just made with scraps and a punch from my um, stash. <laughs> I did add an eyelet to this one and a little ribbon. This one um, is another piece of scrap. And I just used a die that I had in my stash. Cut out some leaves and little tiny flowers. And on this side I have a pumpkin. So this side in the pullout, we have uh, two photo mats here. It says Happy Thanksgiving. And on the back side, I have one of the gnomes with the word gobble and two more photo mats. Then I have a trifold here just held with a paper clip. And it opens out this way. I did not stamp the photo, place photo here stamp because. Um, you know, you might want to journal on some of these. You might not actually want to put a photo on every one of them. So I didn't stamp them so that the recipient has that option. So it just fastens back up. This was so easy and quick to make. Okay, and in this pocket, we have a large photo mat. And I have a pullout in here. And it just has photo mats on the inside and on the back. Isn't he cute? And this is this pocket is really roomy. You can see you can get tons of stuff in here. At this, by the time I filmed this, I think I had close to 30 photo mats in the project. And you can see there's room for plenty more. Uh, this is from the sticker sheet. It just says fall is in the air with two photo mats. And then I have three photo mats on the back says so thankful and traditions. And this one is one of my favorites. This was from the cut apart sheet. And I just cut the words, uh, cut around the words and put it on the top. Then I cut out two ovals with the die that I have. Another little sprig of grass. And I used some of the mushroom and leaf stickers. And on the back I have the word pumpkin pie with the gnome holding the pumpkin pie. And then this one actually pulls out. And you have three photo mats on there. And then we have a cut apart here with a photo mat on the back of it. So you can see there's tons and tons of stuff, room in this. For as little as it is, it really holds a lot. So um, let me get a measurement of the, the finished size for you is eight by eight and a quarter. So for something so small, it holds a lot of photos. So uh, there is a tutorial following this walkthrough. And if you make one, I hope you'll share photos with us and let us see what you have created as well. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, and I'll be back soon with another project. Bye. Hey, everyone. Uh, this morning I'm building this new fo folio folder 
whatever. <laughs> I'm not sure what to call it, to tell you the truth. It is a three-piece base that is going to hold two pull-out folders or folios. I have my three pieces cut here, and I'll show you that in a second. Well, let me just show you now. This is your first base piece. This is your second, and I have it scored, and this is on your cut list. I have it scored at the top and the bottom at a half an inch, and that is going to attach over here, giving us a pocket on this side. Then this one will attach just shy of this notch I have on three sides, giving us a pocket over here so that we have two pullouts. So you need four papers for the front of it if you want them to be different, which I do. So I picked out the green check, the multiple colors of leaves, and it's all kinds of leaves on a white background. Then I have the gold spectrum paper with the dots, or you can turn it over and do the stripes, but I think I'm going to do the dots. I like the dots. And then I have the multiple colored plaid. So that's what I'm going to use for the front. But what we want to do is score these two. Oh, and before I scored them, I flip this one over, and I stack them up. And I put a mark at nine and three quarters because that is half. Or nine and three quarters. Jeez. Four and three quarters. That is half. And then I have a little circle punch. This is a two inch punch. I had to look and see. It's an old one I've had for a long time. And I have it marked on the back when I want to notch something so that I can get it straight. And then I have it marked center. So I just put it in like this up to my two little marks here in the center. I lined it up with that center dot, that four and three quarters, and I just punched a notch so that when I flip it over, it's going to go like this. All right, so let's score these and put them together. Or burnish them, I mean. Well, sometimes I can't talk, you know what? I'm going to put this one under and burnish it. And I'm just going to use the art glitter glue to put them down. You can use whatever you like. I pretty much stick with the art glitter glue when at all possible because in humid areas it works really well. And I am in a humid area. And the score tape sometimes tends to pull apart on me. It never seems to dry out. And if you have it in a pocket where you put an insert, then whatever you put in the insert is going to stick. So, okay. Now, I did not score this end. But I'm think I have half inch, but I'm thinking maybe I better to give myself more depth. So, as a afterthought of this process. Let's score the long end of both of these opposite the notch at a half inch. Oops. Make sure it's on there straight. That'll just give us a little bit more depth in our pocket. And this one as well. A lot of times I design on the fly. I, you know, I, I have an idea and I start to put it together and then I think, oh, you know, maybe I should do this or maybe I should add that. So, when I, somebody had asked recently if people draw out their designs and all of that and there's nothing wrong with doing that, but when I do it, I end up changing my mind as I go along because I think of something else. I want to add or I want to do to it. What did I do with my scissors? There they are. So let's trim out these corners. I just want to taper into that. Get rid of that bulk on both pieces. Okay. 
those perhaps. Okay, so now this one is your eight and a half by eight. And we're going to put it on here like that. And we want the larger of the two. Let's burnish this now that we've got it scored. Now check it like you would when you're making an album cover and make sure you don't have any. See, those are going to overlap a little bit, so I want to trim them down some more so I don't have a lot of bulk. I don't want them to overlap just a little bit more off of this one. Just off of the point of it. There, that's fine. And this one's the same way. Trim some more off of it. worry about taking too much. You can always take more, but you can't put it back. Okay, there's that one. Okay, so this one is going to attach all the way over to the left side. So let's get our art glitter glue out. <coughs> here. Just a little bit. Just miter my hair since they're going all the way to the top and the bottom. You don't want to have any edges showing. So we're going to get our art glitter glue on here or whatever adhesive you want to use. running off the edge. Probably should have laid it down to do this. It would have been easier. Okay, so let's match up our corners. Got a little glue hanging over there. I don't want to wipe it off on my sweatpants. <laughs> All right, so that corner, along with the top, and this corner matches the bottom. Perfect. And that's going to leave us a nice pocket there. And I may decide I want to round those edges or maybe trim off a quarter of an inch. Since I took a half inch here, it's giving me a larger margin than what I originally had. So let's burnish this so that we can trim these up. This one is going to go just shy of this, but before I put that down, let me cut a piece of, see the green plaid is going to go first right here, so I need a piece that is, yeah. I'm going to cut a piece that is two inches. By eight and three eighths. And 
that is going to go in here. And then we need a piece of the leaf pattern I had next. And this is going to sit here, but I want to put it down before I attach this. So this is going to sit right here. So I want it to go just under, so I'm going to cut an inch by eight and three eighths. this one with vintage photo. What did I do with vintage photo? That's black. Hmm. I gotta find vintage photo. I put it up. There it is. thinking that I want to ink this before I go any farther. I should have done it before I glued it down, but it'll be okay. I just want to give it a little bit of color because it's pretty bland. And I think I will round that corner there. Let me get my corner rounder real quick. Well, maybe yes, maybe no. Did I put it in the wrong spot? Oh, there it is. Okay. Okay, let's ink this. I think it'll look a lot better with an inked edge. Let's put this one in place. Now we're going to have to line up the punch again. But that's okay. It'll fit in there. See what I'm doing. I know you can't, but I'm going to try really hard to get it in there. Okay. Put 
without pinching myself. I thought it moved, but it didn't. Okay. There we go. Notch is made. out of the glue. I'm going to try to stay on this and not take so long to finish this one this time, but I tell you I must have a touch of arthritis in my back because my, oh, I didn't round it. My back gets to hurting so bad sometimes I have to go sit down. And it just seems like it takes me forever sometimes. And I don't know what it is about standing and crafting, but I can't get a good visual on an edge if I don't stand up. And I stand so much when I'm crafting that my back starts hurting. And then I have to go sit down. My grandson said it's because of the way I lean over the table, which probably is true, but you know, i got to be able to see the edges. Okay, there's that. Now, let's ink this one up before we put it down. And this is your six and a quarter by nine and a half. And I think I'll put my papers down before I then it would be easier to punch the notch. This one is going to sit right like this. Just shy of that notch. And I can always put that one down later, but I want to put the, the plaid on top of here. So I'm going to need a piece that's 8 and 3 eighths by... Six and a little more than six and five eighths, almost six and three quarters. Okay. You get that plan. You know, I'm thinking maybe I should put this underneath. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, let's cut this at six. Almost six and three quarters by eight and three eighths. And you know what I did? I didn't allow for that half inch turn under. What a dummy I am sometimes. And I've got it a little bit long, so I can trim it off. I'm going to take just a hair off of there. See, that's what happens sometimes. You just have to Still take a little bit off of that width. And 
I think that'll be good. Pause this just a second. I'll be right back. Okay, guys. I've already run into something that I wanted to change. And that's what I mean about crafting on the fly and writing down your instructions. It doesn't always work out that way. And then you get to putting it together and you think, yeah, that's not exactly what I want. So when I put this down like this, there was hardly any of this edge. And it left this one looking out of balance. So I rescored it so that it will be just shy and leave a little tan border right here so we have the same margins. So I will put the correct measurement for this on your um, cut list so that you'll cut it this this width. And then I scored it again at a half and that's where I'm going to cut it off. So I'll have my half inch to fold under. But it just didn't look eye pleasing to me. It looked way out of balance. And I thought, yeah, that's never going to work. So I'm going to cut it off right where I made that second score line. I can get it to lay down. And I need to change this blade. I know I do. It's getting kind of rough. And I don't think that was exactly a straight cut. It wasn't. Let me do it again. That's better. Now I'll miter my corners again. And this is my... This is my fold. So I want to miter it right here. be like I want it. So let's fold all of this under. And I'm going to put it just shy. Now see that's that looks better because there's more of this showing. It just it didn't look right to me. So so what this actually needs to be let me measure this far I glue it down needs to be five. So I will change that. And let's get some glue on these. And I didn't put my pin back in it. I'm terrible about that. I always forget my pin. And this will give us the two pockets we need. And I'm not going to put anything on the back just yet. I will probably use a ribbon closure for this to hold the two inserts down. Oh, I didn't mind with this top corner. I'm not exactly sure what I want to do yet, so I'm not going to put anything on the back yet, so I have a place to bury my ribbon in case that's what I do, which will probably be the case. And this is going to be a little bit stiff because it's got that other paper on it. But I'm going to make it work because that's what I want it to do. It just has to cooperate with me whether it likes it or not. It was one of those afterthought things. 
Okay. And just shy of that and up to the top. to the bottom. Okay. Now once we have our inserts in, let me put this pin back before I forget again. Um, once we have the inserts in, they'll go here in here. I don't want to pull on that until it's good and dry. And then she sent this little fence that is so cute. Let me get it over here. I laid it aside so I wouldn't get it all bent up. There's two strips of this fence. Isn't that cute? I thought that would be so cute right in here. And to put some um, um, acrylic sheet behind it to make a pocket with and stick some gnomes in there and that cute so that's what I'm gonna do but I want it to be white so I'm going to take and I hope this works with a stamp pad I've got a white pad that I've had for a long time and it's not real juicy so hopefully it won't warp this too much I'm just gonna try to press it into the pad and hope I can get it wide enough. I don't want to get it so wet that it warps. And I may glue two or three thicknesses together just to give it a little bit more stability, but I am going to put a piece of acrylic behind it. Yeah, it's picking up the white. So I'll just keep working on it until I get it as wide as I want it. Yeah, it's getting there. And just keep pressing it into the white ink. the dry spot to count. I need one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe seven. One, two, three, four, five. So two more than what I've got. That one's good. Two's almost done. We just started raining here. I don't know if you can hear it or not. There's a metal roof on my daughter's house. And sometimes it gets really loud when the, if it rains very hard. So if you hear a lot of clanking type noises, it's rain hitting the metal roof. <clears throat> and I didn't know it was supposed to rain today. Almost... And it takes this white ink a while to dry, so I'll have to let it set out for a bit. There's number six and number seven. I hope you can see what I'm doing. I wasn't even thinking about that. I guess you can. Let me move this out of the way and I'll move it up a little bit more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah. I might only need six. Oh, it's picking it up pretty good. Okay, I'm going to lay it down and let it dry. It may take several hours because this white is really slow to dry. And then if I need to, I can go over it one more time. But that is my game plan for this so far. I hope you all will stay with me. Excuse me. 
hope y'all will stay with me and decide to make this right along with me because I think it's going to be really super cute. And I have got to design the inserts now. I haven't even thought any farther ahead than creating this base. But you can see we've got a nice big space on the back and I can attach a ribbon across here. But I want to work on the inserts and make sure that I've got all the right paper for that. Alright guys, I will cut some more papers and work on these inserts and I'll be back shortly. Thanks. Alright guys, I have a lot of pieces cut out here so I want to share with you what I am thinking on the back side there is also going to be a pocket because I want an insert for a closure on this side and I'll show you that in a minute but I've that's why it's laying so wonky that's under there I'll move it out of the way for now but we're gonna have a pocket <clears throat> excuse me a pocket under there so we have an insert that wraps over the top and then this one will come up over the top and we'll have a ribbon closure so for this side, I have two pieces that measure five and a half by seven and a half. Now this is going to be the bottom. This is the top. I have rounded these top corners and one of the lower corners. This one I'm not going to round because I'm going to put my fence down there and I don't want to round it and then have the fence show from the back side. So that's the reason for that. So let's put those two together. And let me... Scissors. Here they are. I want to miter these edges just a little bit. Just on one of them. And we're going to attach these two together. This is going to be our insert for the left hand pocket. Okay, so we're going to attach it just like this. Line up your top and your bottom and take it almost to the score. Just shy of it, and if you have to do any trim work, now's the time to do it. And mine looks like it matches pretty good. Although, this could actually be moved over just a hair. There we go. Get it perfectly straight. That will be our insert for this side. It's going to slide in like this. A little bit of a lip in there. And it will sit like that. It has a half inch gusset there. Uh, each one of those was scored at a half an inch, and it is on your cut list. Then our little fence will go down here. Okay, on the opposite, no, let's go to the pocket. I have some inserts made for this pocket on the right hand side. Quite a few. And they're all inked. And this is on your cut list. And I'll try to do some of the decorating with you, although I try to get a lot of my uh, paper cutting and all of that done off screen just so the video isn't so darn long. This is just a trifold. And it is a 12 inch by, I don't guess I wrote it on here, it's on your cut list. 12 by 7, a little bit over 7. And it is scored at 3 and a half and 7 and a half. And then I just folded it up on itself to make a little trifle. But I wanted a little bit of a edge out here. Then I have one that is seven and a half by seven and a half. I haven't inked that one yet. This one is five and a half by nine and a half. And this one is using the, I think it's called Fancy Tag Topper Punch. It's an old one. Let me grab it real quick that I've 
had for years. You might still find it on uh, eBay. I don't know. It's real old. It is geared for 2 inch tag. But what I did was I just I measured the center of this and lined up the center on the back side with this notch and I punched it and then I just took my cutting blade and cut off the sides and rounded the edges. So that's what I did with that. And this is, gosh it is really old. I've had it a long time. Then I have, this is going to be a large photo insert with just a tab pocket. And this measures, didn't write, I try to write it on here so I can tell you guys as I go along, but it is on your uh, cut list. This one is seven and a half by eight, and with the seven and a half at the top, it's scored at one half inch. And then I've made a pocket which will attach to this half inch flap, and we'll be able to put all kinds of photo mats and inserts in there. So that's what goes in that pocket. Let me lay this over here. And this goes over here. Oh, and I meant to tell you, on this one, there will be a pocket on the inside of each one of these. Here and here. And these are on your cut list as well. So I think it's going to be really cute when it's all said and done. I've got to ink that one up as well. Okay, then for the pocket on the back side. It is going to attach, and you'll have a three-quarter inch space on each side, and it's going to attach here. So that when we put this insert in it, the insert will go like this. Let me grab the other one here. This one will be on this side. And you can do it inside or outside, whichever one you want to overlap. Doesn't make any difference. Then I use this tag tub or punch again, and I cut two little tabs that I'm going to attach here and here, and tie a ribbon to close it. I thought that'd be really cute. It's something really different. But bear in mind, our fence will be down here too. But I think it'll be really cute, and that's going to be the closure. All right. That's my game plan. All right, guys, I will um, get all of this glued together, and I'll be right back. And, well, I'll cut some of uh, my design paper so we can do a little bit of that together, too. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Real quick, I wanted to show you. Um, in order to go any farther, I had to put the paper on the back first. So I cut out the one that looks like the tree branches, and then I took a scrap off of the reverse side of this, which, here, let me show you. It is the back side of this paper. And usually, if you use the reverse sides, they complement each other and they work well together. So I'm going to attach my pocket here so it's heading the right orientation. And I'm just going to eyeball it on the back there. And I did punch my notch and inked everything. So we're going to put this pocket down. In order to do any of the front, I needed to have all these pockets on. And this was the last pocket that we're adding. Okay, so this is left side, so we're going to turn it over like this, and I want my pocket here. Make sure I put it in the right spot. It never worked to glue it in the wrong place, would it? So I'm just going to eyeball it for center and stick that down right up to the edge of that.
I had first thought that I would put strips down here and then put another paper here, but then I still have to go back and put paper underneath the top edge. So I thought I'll just put it all the way across and have it said and done. So I'm going to put some clothespins on here to hold this in place till it dries. I'm going to grab one more out of my drawer over here. And I'm going to set this aside while I cut some papers for the front. But then now we'll be able to work on this insert and this other insert over here. And then it'll all be coming together pretty quick, you guys. Alright, I'll be back shortly. Okay, guys, we're going to get back to work on this. I have a lot of pieces cut out, as you can see. I have changed my mind once again. So let me get this insert out of the way here. I haven't inked any of these pieces yet. I have decided on this side. I had told you earlier that um, I think there was going to be an insert. Well, there, I know there was going to be one in this pocket. I think it was 5.5 by 7.5 or whatever it was. I decided to take that out. I didn't like it. So what I'm going to do is I am going to attach this to the back side and I will think of some way to camouflage it after I get going here. But here's my little fence and it is going to sit down here on this yellow and make a pocket. But we'll add that later. But before I put this down I want to add my strips. So I have one... No, that ain't the right one. What I do with it? Is it this one? No, that one goes on this one. What did I do with my little strip? Hmm. Well, I guess I better cut another one real quick. Let me make sure I've got a piece long enough. Yep. I just need three eighths of an inch. I know I had a piece cut, but far be it for me to find it now. And I just want this in here. And I'm going to make a little mark here so I can cut it off. And then I'll have to ink it. See where I put my mark and get it in the light. make it shorter if I have to. Don't want to get it too short. No, nope, that'd be good. Okay, ink, ink, ink. Where's my ink? Right here. You know the saying, I'd lose my head if it wasn't attached. Well, that's me. So we're going to add this down. I just want to get rid of the white edges on here. I had to wait to get started this morning after my granddaughter left for work because her dog gets so upset. She just howls and moans and carries on for the longest time once when Elizabeth first leaves. Now I have two pieces cut for here, which I have to ink as well. see as I go along frequently I change my mind and that needs to be cut off just a hair and I'll just snip it with the scissors just a little bit too long okay that'd be better now here's one for the top and we can put those down and that one's the right length I got one longer than the other, I don't know. But we'll glue these down and then I can check my 
burgundy for the inside. I'll go ahead and ink it while I'm here. I may have to trim it down and re-ink one edge in case it's a little bit too big. Okay, get that out of the way. So let's put these three little pieces down first. Oh, I got dust everywhere. Where does it all come from, I swear? Okay, a little art glitter glue on this strip. Okay, when I started cutting my pieces and laying it out, after I did the first part of the tutorial, that's when I decided to make the change. You know, always things just don't look eye-pleasing to you. And that's why I cut it and I do a dry run and if I don't like it, it ain't happening. I just, I have to like it first. And we don't all like the same thing, so if by chance you don't like what I'm doing, change it up and do it the way you like it. Okay, so we're going to put this right down here. Right along the bottom. And one for the top. This is so easy to put together. If you're a beginner, don't let it scare you because it's not hard. It's just a matter of measuring and cutting. And it all goes together really easy. Let's see if this fits. Nope, it's too deep. So I want it right there. And right there. Let me trim that off. I figured it would need a little bit of trimming. Okay. Now I'm gonna put a little ink on this edge. I think I need to change my blade in that one. And I can take just a hair off of this other edge too. Let me get another blade real quick because I think that one's getting kind of raggedy. Change my blade in that paper cutter real quick. Didn't take but a second. I need to buy some more of these two next time I get into town. as a whistle. And let's see what we got. Wrong way. Much better. You know, I think I still could take just a hair off of here. I think I will. Just doesn't leave me very much of a margin to show up. for a brand new blade. There we go. I still see too much white edge from the backing on here. There, that 
that's better. Okay, we can put this one down now. portion right here is going to wrap to the back and I want to make it let me see how my fence looks I want part of my fence to show but not the whole thing I think that'll be good right there so I'm going to hang on to that flip it over I'll make myself just a tiny pencil line right here so I know where to put it Can't even see it. Super tiny pencil line. Okay, now I see it. Okay, so let's glue this down to the back. If I'd have thought of this in the beginning, I would have put the pocket all the way across so it would encompass both of these but I didn't so there's that now the next part is my little hinge and this will be the other half of the hinge is I have cut this with this um, tag topper punch again that I showed you before and I'm going to put this print on the outside of it and this is going to be our fastener and we're going to have a ribbon tie on it trim this just a hair because it's too wide and I'm going to do it with my big scissors there that's better now this is going to sit on top of that and our ribbon is going to go up under here so let's get our ribbon and fasten it down going to use the gold. Alright, how did you get in here? There it is. I'm going to use the gold that she sent me along with the brown check. And I know it's way too much, but I never know how much to use. So I'm going to cut it in half. And I'm 
going to give me two lengths of the gold, the same length. Yes, it's way too long, but that's okay. I'll use it on something else later. So there's that. Okay, I'll lay this aside. Now on the back side of this, I want to attach score tape. And where's my half inch? Oh, right in front of me. Duh. Tell you, sometimes I can't see for looking. All right, I am going to attach score tape under here. Two pieces for security. stripe down first because it's narrow and I'm going to put it through the hole and right down the center of this tag just like that now I'm going to put the gold through so that it is behind the brown And I'm going to center it right over the brown. Just like that. Then we will ink up this piece for the back. Which is the stripe. And it will attach on here. so it doesn't grab my piece right away. I'm going to put some glue on top of this, which is for extra security. Now, oh, let me trim that. It's kind of hanging out there. still see it a little bit but it's not going to show once I put it on here now that's trapped in there pretty good let's burnish over that again now this is going to sit in the center of this piece so we will glue that down right in the center as close as we can thereabouts. And move it up just a hair. Just like that. Now there's that front pocket. Uh, I like that. Isn't that cute? Cute, cute, cute. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing to the opposite side. You know what? Let me get some um, dimensional tape real quick. And I'm going to go ahead and... What did I do with it? I've been trying to reorganize and now I can't find nothing. I've got some... I want to cut some narrow strips of this to give it a little more elevation so I can have inserts under the fence. So let me turn it around this way so I can get my edge straight.
cut that very straight, but as long as it's narrow enough, that's what matters. And one more little piece. I don't know where I got this stuff. It's a roll of it. I've had it for a long time and I don't use it a lot, but when you need it, it comes in handy. Okay, so let's put our fence down. It's been rolling around here, getting in my way, so I'm just going to fasten it down. Actually, you know what? I better cut some little... pieces for the bottom so that everything doesn't fall through. Anything that I put in it, I don't want it to, and I don't want this to cave in at the bottom either. So let's put some little squares down here. Oops sticking to myself. I need two more. Oops. had some um, just cardstock spacers under there, but I didn't think that was going to give me enough room. That's why I wanted to add this foam tape. And it's sticky on both sides, so when I put it down, it's going to stay. But another thing that I need to do real quick before I put this down is take my powder tool and rub it along the inside of this tape so that anything I put in there doesn't stick to the tape. Now we can put our fence down right along the bottom of the yellow. Okay, that'll stay put now. And I cut some little pumpkins I want to put. And I just made these using um, three little circles. And I inked them with, um, let's see, what's the name of it? Uh, striped marmalade. Spiced marmalade. I can't even read. And then I just took a piece of green um, artisan chipboard. Or no, it was the... Um, I think it's called Spanish Moss from uh, Tammy's My Colors. And I just laid, layered three little, uh, I don't know if they're three quarter or one inch, let me see. One inch circles. Just, just this little EK Success Punch. I punched out three circles and I just inked around the edges and layered them up. And I just took my scissors and freehanded a couple leaves and a stem. And I thought I'd put some pumpkins down here in front of the fence. And I've got some more little tiny ones cut out with a three-quarter inch, I think. It might be a half inch. Let me see what it is. This is a different one. Three-quarter inch. And this one is, I don't know who it's by. It doesn't say. It's just one I've had around forever. But I thought I'd make a couple little small pumpkins to put down here, too. It'd be really cute. And then... Okay, so let's move on to the other side while we're doing this. Okay, we're going to do the same thing to this side. I have my strip cut for here. And then I have these and this. And then I have the same thing 
for this side. So I will go ahead and ink all these and glue them down. Now this one is an insert. It doesn't get glued down. It slides into the back side in that pocket. Alright, so let's do that and then I'll be back. Okay, here's what I have so far. I did um, finish the outside of this one just like we did that one. I did add some strips of the cardstock in here just to give this more stability because when you go to tie them they wanted to mush over to the right and I didn't like that. Kind of collapsed on me so I have cut papers like this for the inside and then I've cut photo mats with some dies that I have in my stash and I'll use some of the stickers to further embellish these pockets. Let me see if if I'm in frame where you can see everything. Yeah, I think you can. Let me scoot it over just a little bit here. And I'm going to ink all of these and get them glued down. And then I'll cut some papers for the inserts. And I'll be back. Okay, I just want to catch you up. So far, this is what I have. Uh, we did this together. And I have glued down my cut aparts I did add uh, one of the phrases from the sticker sheet and this is also from the stickers and I just backed it on a little bit of the craft cardstock and just glued it on the bottom edge so that you can tuck your photo behind it and then on this side I used a smaller frame with a little small place where you can put a little message or a date or whatever you might want to write another one of these sentiments and another sticker on some craft cardstock. Uh, I mounted this um, cut apart on some of the rust colored paper that was in the collection and on the back I just put an oval frame with that little pumpkin I made. I don't know that I'm going to leave it in here but I just put it in there for the time being. And when this one pulls out we have three small frames on the inside of that and on the back we have a cut apart that's held down by the daisy flower and there's room for more cut aparts in there if you wish so that's what I have so far So let's put this back in the little pocket and slide it in and I will continue on I'm going to work on this one next Oh, that wants to come out. That might not be a good idea. I might have to put might have to put a little paper clip on that to keep it in place because when I slide it in it wants to push it out. So I may have to do something else with that. We'll see. May have to put a little paper clip on here to secure it, but that that'd be fine. That works well too. Okay, so on this one I have cut the notch in it and I'm going to lay it just like so and I want to glue this inside so that when it, I can put a piece of tape on it so that when I insert something it doesn't catch on this edge so I'm going to put my glue on here slide this right up to it just like that let me make sure I like the looks of it on the outside I do but I need to trim miter those edges there and move my scissors there they are going to use plain old ordinary scotch tape. 
it just smooths out this edge so that when you insert something in there it doesn't catch on that edge there we go okay that'll take care of that now we can glue down these two little flanges here and then it'll be time for me to cut some more papers looks like that is going to be a little wide over there how did that happen it is let me unglue this I'm going to put another score mark on this because it is a little bit wide and I didn't realize I had done that. So I am just going to lay it on here and find a score mark closest to that and rescore it. Maybe I need this one, it's more pointy. so that I can fold it in tighter. Now let's see what it looks like. Just pull it just a little bit more. A little bit tighter. ink on it since I folded it over more. Yeah, I can see where that's better. Okay. Always a, well I shouldn't say always, but usually there's a way to fix things. Make sure I got enough glue over here. That's better. Much better. Okay. So now we have our pocket for our insert. Okay. And then I have these that I had already shown you earlier. And I have this one, which is also on your cut list. And this one is going to Excuse me, that goes over here. Let's get it out of the way. This is going to insert on this side. Among other things, I've got to make more inserts for this side. the wrong one. Yeah, I'm going to have to trim that down because, well, I wanted it to stay right out here, but still, it's going to hang out and I want it to be hidden, so I'm going to trim that down and I'll change your measurements too. Okay? All right, I'll be back shortly. i got to cut some more papers. Hello, everyone. I'm back and I have finished covering my embellishments and I wanted to share each of them with you before I do my final walkthrough, which you will see that before you see the tutorial. But I wanted you to have more information. This is the triple fold out that I made and I just uh, cut my photo mats and then added some smaller pieces of the paper. I did not stamp uh, with the photo stamp here because you may want to put a photo there, you may want to journal, you may want to add embellishments, whatever, you know, so I didn't stamp them. And then I did the same thing on the back. I just added a little bit of the um, spectrum paper just to break it up so I didn't have white on white. 
and then I just fastened it with a paper clip on this one and all of these are on your cut list this one I just added one of the gnomes and the word gobble to it two photo mats and two over here as well on this one I used the fancy tag topper punch again uh, this was from one of the cut aparts and I just cut around the words and put it up at the top with two of the oval dies from my stash uh, some of the stickers and a little piece of grass that I had a die that cut that and then on the back I put a gnome with another sticker that says pumpkin pie because he's holding a pumpkin pie then on this one I used two more of the ovals and I just die cut some leaves and then on the back I die cut a frame out of the wine colored paper that came with the collection and then I just cut a piece of white and put it in the center just to kind of break it up this one I have three photo mats on it what is that it's got a spot to see if the eraser will take it off just says traditions and this says thankful I have three photo mats on this side and two on this side and this is from the sticker sheet and I did pop it up on a little piece of foam tape then this one is I think the first one I showed you that it's the largest insert and I have two pieces in here but you can see this is a this is a healthy pocket here that you can get a lot into this little fold out has one of the cut aparts with some of the design paper and on the inside I just used some stickers with photo mats and the same on the back and then I made a tag and added some of the um, die cuts that I had in my stash these little flowers are a punch I had and I just wrapped some twine around it and tied a bow it was really super easy to make I like to use up my scraps that way so I'm going to add all these to the book and I'm going to do my final walkthrough now so if you decide to make one of these with me I hope you'll share photos and let me see what you've created as well thanks for watching have a great day, and I will see you soon.